Swap us over. All right. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 7 of Star Trek Fenrir. Uh, if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in the year 2412 aboard a Cerberus class in the Sabine Expanse. You don't need to have watched our previous episodes to enjoy this one, but you're going to probably have a richer experience if you do. And if you want to catch the VODs, they're on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. This week, I only have really one announcement, and it's a very special one. Uh, the 8472 Undine game of Star Trek Adventures fe uh, ah, featuring John, who is uh, Mr. Tavi tonight, and uh, Mr. Tuleyup from the Mata Hari. They will be playing an all Undine game of Star Trek Adventures. So tune in uh, this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern and show your support. Give them a little bit of love. Uh, but with that said, uh, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with John. Yeah, hi. I'm, uh, uh, well, John's here, but he's got his hand up my butt. Uh, so I live in Seattle. Uh, I play Dalvi, and uh, we're just going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. That's me, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> I'm Watney. Um, I play the Commodore Bree Archuleta, um, captain of the Fenrir, and I also play the Denobulan Doctor LL. Hey everybody, I'm Dag. Uh, most commonly, you'll see me as Fenrir's uh, blue uniformed Vulcan holographic science officer. Uh, tonight, I am your favorite going Zeke, and we're gonna rock this joint. And uh, you should follow this guy at Track Nexus on Twitter. Uh, hey guys, I'm Aaron. I'm from Eastern Canada, uh, playing Commander RJ Williams, Chief of Security for the Fenrir. Um, also from time to time, I dabble as Lieutenant Jensen. And uh, I'm Matthew. I am also from Eastern Canada, but just a little bit west of Aaron. And um, I play Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin, one of the science officers on board the Fenrir, and also a Hydran security officer, Lieutenant Cartwright. All right. And with that, let's go ahead and run the... I see you, Mr. Bit Bomber. I see you. Begin. Don't you start that. I love you. We'll do the intro. And welcome back. So those who are new or just tuning in, uh, something I like doing for all my Star Trek games is having an opening log as read by the players. And tonight we have Mr. Williams taking that responsibility. So Williams, if you would be so kind. Sure. Chief Security Officer's Log, Stardate 89512.3. While Fenrir proceeds to Sector 215 to assist the Leif Erikson with an in-depth survey of a globular cluster, Commodore Archuleta has assigned me to lead an away mission to the planet of the Savone 3. The Savonians have petitioned the Federation Council for protectorate status, and a Federation ambassador, Elias Isaacson, has been dispatched ahead of us to begin the preliminary diplomatic overtures. As a gesture of good faith, Lieutenants LL, Cartwright, and Tavi, along with Chief Zeke and myself, are ferrying medical supplies 
and a prefab medical facility to our prospective new allies. Once we make planet fall, our orders are to coordinate with Ambassador Isaacson regarding deployment, logistics, and supply chain. My nervousness about putting in, being put in charge of our portion of a diplomatic mission must have shown through to Bree when she briefed me. She didn't even try to rib me. You've been ducking these kind of assignments, she told me. Now it's come to this. It's time to take those pips for a walk, Commander. That's an order. So, here I am. I put on this uniform because I wanted to explore the stars and extend a hand in friendship to my fellow sentients. For five years, I had to use that hand to point a phaser at the Klingons. I'm damn good at pointing a phaser. But now it's time to prove that that's not all I'm good for. I'm worthy of this uniform. I am a good man. I don't have to prove that to my crew. And I don't think I have to prove myself that fact anymore either. The new chapter starts today. End log. Very nice. So we cut to the interior of the runabout. As you all are doing your last pre-fight checks... Uh, before you arrive at your destination. Uh, of course, I have Cartwright, Tavi, and Williams up in the cockpit, and Alel and Zeke in the back, but feel free to move about the cabin as you wish. Uh, outside of the front view screen, you do see that the blue-white planet of Savonia 3 is uh, outside. Uh, you'll, your arrival's maybe about 15, 20 minutes at standard impulse. So uh, feel free to take it from there. And um, we are set to help with logistics or a specific thing. Uh, your specific? task is to set up a clinic uh, okay. in terms of uh, sort of solidifying relationships between the Federation and Savonians. Okay. Um, so Alel is in the, what would be described as, I guess, the medical section of the large runabout um, mm -hmm. with if there was one, she's kind of like going through a list she's made. She's hmm, a couple of autoclaves and surgical bio beds, a few standard bio beds, a couple of presser units, basic stuff, really osteogenic stimulators, dermal regenerators, delta wave inducers, cortical scanners and stimulators. Oh, cardio simulators. Might want to triple that one, three hearts and everything. Uh, oh, can't forget a premium hypospray kit with all the fixings, stimulants, painkillers, neurotransmitters, anticoagulants, antibiotics, and antivirals. Hmm. Oh, right. Can't forget specifically not antifungals. Totally would have offended somebody. Yikes. And she's just kind of going through her list. Uh, Cartwright would be reviewing different uh, sort of profiles on the species and uh, their physical capabilities. Um, and he would then turn to Commander Williams. Uh, Commander, uh, might I ask why it is that such a large security detachment has been sent along on this mission? Is it really necessary for both Lieutenant Tavi and myself to have accompanied you? I don't know if it's necessary, Kurt, right? But I wanted you both to get some first-hand field experience on a diplomatic mission. Oh, well, uh, that, that is very kind of you, sir. And I suppose that if something untoward were to happen, mm -hmm. given this species does seem to be quite physically imposing, and uh, he brings up a holographic display of the creature and places it relative to a human being, and it stands at roughly half a meter uh, to maybe a quarter to a half a meter taller than uh, a regular human being. And uh, they seem to be possessed of immense physical strength, roughly equivalent to that of a Vulcan. It may indeed have been wise for you to bring us along, but um, they seem to be a relatively peaceable species. By all accounts, yes, quite, quite reasonable, but you know, you, you never know. We're the new kid on a block around here and well, you know, I just don't want us to get bullied. So, uh, uh, precaution, sir. So, Commander, um, he looks around a little bit. Uh, which one of us is going to be like the person that talks to him? <laughs> well, I guess that's. Well, I mean, that that's the ambassador. 
we've already, we've already got a Federation ambassador on planet. I mean, I imagine there'll be a meet and greet and some glad handing with some local representatives, but I think all the heavy lifting in terms of diplomacy is going to be handled by Ambassador Isaacson. Oh, that's good. I'm sure he's not going to be incapacitated or anything. Also, uh, Lieutenant Tavi, I might add, while the ambassador may indeed be uh, responsible for representing the Federation's interests, I do believe that Starfleet uh, Directive 17.1-6, paragraph 18, suggests that in uh, the case of, well, Starfleet's involvement, uh, Commander Williams would represent us as the, well, highest ranking officer. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. Uh, you know, you, you, you're going to do great, Commander. And he pats him on the back. I appreciate the confidence, Lieutenant. I uh, I need all the confidence I can get. I'm. I'll admit I'm way way out of the element here. Well, uh, you know, guy right here has your back. Uh, I have the back of your legs, uh, so we got you covered. <laughs> and uh, rest assured, sir, that uh, all of us, I think, feel the same way. Certainly, I do. I'm not exactly out of my element, but I am out of my methane atmosphere. So, you know, that's something, <laughs> something similar, I suppose. <clears throat> well, we're both uh, maybe a little bit outside of our habitable zones. Oh, it's going to suck for Zeke. He's cold-blooded. Yeah, on the uh, we're on the wrong side of minus twenty degrees Celsius here, so we're gonna need to make sure that uh, he takes some extra precautions with some thermal gear. Yeah, the nice thing is this uh, this fur is uh, much thicker than it looks. Well, so speaking of Mr. That. Zeke. Uh, Zeke, you're in the back, I imagine, overseeing, just making sure all the crates are in order, all the supplies are ready to go, at least the non-medical supplies. And I'd like Zeke, if possible, to roll me an insight in engineering difficulty of zero. Any uh, specialties apply? Take a look at your focuses. And actually, this is a uh, good moment to mention this. So because uh, we are activating Alel, Cartwright, Tavi, and Zeke, uh, all four of you may add something to your characters, your supporting characters here. Um, that can be raising an attribute. That can be raising a discipline. You can give them a value. You can give them a talent. Or you can give them another focus. Uh, but looking at your ones you've got right now, Zeke, I would say that... Um, I have to have a focus in operational inventories. Let's call it logistics. But That's yeah. a much better word. I'll put that in for you because I know you've got the claws on. All right. So, uh, insight engineering, difficulty of zero with logistics yeah. as a focus. All right, so you got one success, uh, which means one momentum. So if someone could track that tonight. Uh, so Zeke, good news. Uh, everything is in order. Uh, should just be a matter of literally landing on the planet and moving the crates to the uh, predefined spot. Uh, but there is a slight problem in that as much as you're double checking what you've brought along, you realize almost with a little bit of perhaps fear and horror, you forgot your cold weather gear. Oh. oh crap I left it right there on the transporter console before they beam me down crap uh hold up hold up uh I think I think we can fix this and uh Zeke will go into the tiny little med area where Alel is mm -hmm. uh hey Alel um I forgot my sweater for the ultra cold weather um, do you have any uh, thermal uh, solutions that you could give me so that I don't freeze to death on the planet? Uh, your sweater? Wouldn't that be in with all the rest of our warm gear? Yeah, I just did an inventory. I forgot my stuff. Just your stuff? Uh, well, I mean, I could go count it again, but yeah, my, my uh, I mean, unless I can't fit into tabbies it's it's very tiny um 
honestly, uh, we have a replicator in here, don't we? You do. Okay. Um, let's see what we can do here. Come on, come on, come on. So wave him over and she will kind of size him up and then place an order for a, a, an Arctic exosuit or something similar. <laughs> Uh, so what appears is actually like a luxurious fur coat, almost like a draping or like an old Nordic style or Viking style fur coat. Mm. And uh, of course, it's faux fur. The replicator does not harm any animals in the making of this coat. Um, but it is uh, quite large. And of course, we're not going to ask Dag to actually put on a fur coat because I like my players living. Oh, she's like going to pull it out and like... Mm, I kind of want to keep this for myself. She'll like throw it on a little bit and like, yeah, way too big. Uh, okay, here. Does this fit? Uh, yeah, actually, that's really good. I don't know why I never thought about that before. I just like replicators are for me, not for clothes shopping. Well, just Thanks. imagine that was just like a bunch of goo a couple of seconds ago, so. Actually, I think they, they pulled the energy from waste reclamation, but uh, I you could double check me on that. Um, I'll take your word for it. Thanks again. Sure. I got a new coat. Why does it smell like heavy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. And on that note, we are going to actually uh, go back to the title screen because it just is such a nice shot. So uh, as the runabout approaches the blue-white orb that is Savonia 3, um, I would like, uh, let's have Williams, let's have you roll a control and a con, difficulty of zero. I am trying to get you guys momentum here. Okay. So I will control and uh, helm operations apply here. Most definitely. Okay, and I'm also going to use my augmented control. Okay. Hey, look at that. That is four successes, which means you have five momentum. Very nice. So, Williams, you guide the runabout down gracefully into the atmosphere, and you do so with such finesse that even in the back, uh, nobody really even feels the jostling of the atmosphere and the howling winds outside. And that is something I would like to highlight, is that the surface of Savonia 3 is, for the most part, a barren ice wasteland. Um, as has been mentioned by uh, you all already, uh, the temperatures tend to be below negative 20 Celsius. Um, really, the only reprieve uh, that anyone living on the planet has is in underground cities or in cities that have been protected almost by being in valleys or calderas or basically something to shield it from the blasting winds that have more or less smoothed the surface of the planet. Um, but you make it look easy. Like this is almost like a test at the Academy. You flying colors pass this test. And as you guide down the runabout through all of this, uh, you eventually break cl cloud cover and you see again, that barren white wasteland. Um, but in the distance, what you see is a small bump on the horizon. And as you get closer and closer and closer, you realize actually that this quote unquote bump is actually about the size of Mount Kilimanjaro. And as you sort of fly over the top of it, you see that the peak has actually been blown off in probably an ancient explosion of some kind. And in the caldera that has been left behind by the volcano, there is a, I wouldn't say frozen, but frosted city uh, that is full of glowing spires, uh, flying vehicles, wheeled vehicles, hovering vehicles, and you set down in something that looks a little bit like this. And I'll describe that for the people who can't see the stream in a second. So when you bring the shuttle down, uh, you do so into one of the predefined landing pads. There are other spaceships and other craft moving uh, about, but you easily can you know, confer with flight command and get a spot to set down. And as the shuttle lands, again, very gracefully, uh, you are actually hailed by the ambassador. This is Shuttle Damocles. Commander Williams speaking. Ah, good, you're here. Of course, you know I'm Ambassador Isakin. 
or Iksasin, or you could just call me Isa. That's what my friends call me. But, uh, yeah, you uh, get here all right? Everything in order? Uh, all supplies are accounted for, Ambassador. We're ready to begin whenever you are. Well, uh, you can go ahead and get started. Uh, I will be along later in the day. I have a few priors that I have to deal with. We're on your timetable, sir. Very good. Ambassador out. And Williams will sort of turn to Tavi and Cartwright. Stuffed shirt. Hey, you uh, you did really good there. Oh, oh yes, and uh, the flying, sir, was absolutely impeccable. I must say, I'm not even my own people could pilot a small craft as well as that. Well, I mean, thanks. That's the trick is you have to keep the inertial dampeners on manual control and uh, usually stray about 0.5 to 0.75 millicrocrons out of phase. Oh, well, uh, I thought that would have introduced some kind of torsional stress on the uh, warpler cells, but... Oh, it, uh, it does. Oh. Yeah. Zeke will move up to the cockpit and, and look out the window. Oh, hey, we already here. Wow, good flying. Good job. Couldn't even tell. Thanks, Zeke. How are we looking back there? Yeah, everything's accounted for. They made this cool new shiny furry coat. Because I forgot mine on Fenrir. Yeah, that's that is nice. Is that gonna be enough for you? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Well let me know if that changes, okay? We just, and four, it's, so. it, sorry, do they they don't eat meat, right? No, they they eat fungus, from what I understand. Okay, well, isn't that supposed to be fur? Isn't like isn't that a Maybe? like a fur coat from like Earth, Williams? Uh, I mean, yeah. If if I was gonna hazard a guess, I'd say maybe mink. But... I mean, to, to a certain point, I mean, uh, kind of looks like a 20th century pimp. Exactly. Would you know what that looks like, Lieutenant? I, oh, I, do, a lot, I do a lot of research. I'm sure that you do. Yes, that's, that's delightful. Um, <clears throat> Alel's like, I want to talk about that later. What is that? <laughs> Nonetheless, Lieutenant Alel, uh, I recognize your diplomatic concerns, but I believe that this species might be um, herbivorous, uh, based not on some kind of moral compunction, but on their, well, their e evolutionary history, their biology. Oh, you, yeah, no, you're right. Um, I think I'm just overthinking it. We should go. I don't know. That one can overthink such things when engaging with a, a new species, but um, it's a, a prudent ca uh, ca caution on your part, certainly, ma'am. <clears throat> All right. So I have two questions for you. They're going to sort of define how the next couple scenes play out. Now, there is obviously the hard labor aspect where you could literally just take crates through the city to your destination, or you could take a pair of transporter enhancers and just beam from the runabout to the clinic once you've gotten to the defined spot. So let's answer that question first. Which of those two did you want to do? Oh, yeah, we're just going to transport the shit out of that stuff. Okay. I agree. Is it, but like, is are we going to surprise them? Do the rest of them know that we're going to be there? I mean, it's probably known that you as Starfleet are going to be here setting up a clinic. I mean, at the very least, somebody's going to have to make a trek on foot with the transporter enhancers. So, um, Lieutenant Alel, why don't you and I go. You seem eager to meet these people. <clears throat> okay, sure. Yeah, I can do it. Um, also, Commander, um, I would be remiss if I did not mention that a commanding officer on a new planet does require a security escort. <laughs> I appreciate that, Lieutenant, but I, I am the chief of security. <laughs> Well, of course I know that, but, uh, you know, I could be, uh, you know, 
a valuable asset. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? I agree. Um, why don't we? Lieutenant- why don't we all just go? I mean, <laughs> let's let's just all go. Yeah, I'll carry the transport enhancers in a backpack, and uh, I'll just uh, open a comm line to the ship, and we're ready to transport the cargo. That's oh, why you're the transport idea. chief. All right, let's get going. Let's put all our right. best feet forward. So you all uh, get ready in your cold weather gear. Uh, you get the backpacks ready, full of transporter enhancers and any materials that probably shouldn't be beamed. Um, And as you step out into the spaceport, uh, you see for the first time an actual real life Savonian. And this is one of those things where I wish I was a better wordsmith, uh, but I'm going to do my best to describe them again for people who can't see the stream right now. So a Savonian, uh, if I were to start, they have what are essentially almost like tree trunk or fungal like structures that crest up from a almost humanoid like head and form a series of ridges and tendrils uh, that drape down across their entire form. Uh, They have a series of four eyes in total, two on each side, one above the other. Um, Their nose is almost like pushed up and flush uh, with their crest. And they have a very long sort of chin, uh, bigger than Jay Leno's, if you know who Jay Leno's is. I broke math. He's very much uh, Ron Perlman-like. There you go. Um, (laughs) But uh, another striking feature about the Savonians is their size. Uh, As was alluded to earlier, um, they are, at their bare minimum, at least two meters or six feet tall. Uh, but you're seeing upwards of seven, even an eight foot tall or about 2.5 meters, if I do the math correctly. So I would think based on what I know of the away team, uh, Zeke is probably about the same size as, as Savonians. And then everybody else is like sort of short in comparison. And then you have Tavi, who's like a teddy bear. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, you know, you have your supplies, you're moving through the city, and from what you see, it's almost like any standard Federation city, even though they're not part of the Federation yet. You're seeing places of commerce, you're seeing places to eat, uh, Savonians going about their daily lives, and just not really even giving you the time of day like you're just sort of a normalcy already, uh, which is probably a good sign, because the last thing you want is, oh, look, an alien, and there being a scene about it. Um, but, uh, as you traverse through the city, you actually don't have far to go. Uh, you maybe go about six or seven blocks away from the spaceport and you arrive at a building that looks like it is already partially prefabbed. And as you step inside, as I switch maps here, you're actually greeted with a rather, I would say, I hesitate to use the word futuristic, Um, But maybe futuristic by like contemporary terms, like out of game terms, where the walls are very sleek. The lighting is very uh, chic, to borrow a term. And there's just a wide open space, uh, maybe about the size of, again, I hesitate to use an American term here. But if you know about a football size, a football field size, uh, maybe about half that. So that's 50 yards, which is roughly... 20 something meters so 20 by 20 so it's a very large space uh that you'll be constructing this clinic in this place looks great this is nice are they hiring hey um, anyway so hey, kind of like go me? over and open the cabinets and stuff and take a look they have the new cabinet smell mm. Hey, uh, Cartwright, can you help me with these transport enhancers? Oh, uh, certainly, sir. Uh, well, you're not actually a sir to me. You're, you're actually low, of lower rank. At, at any rate, sir, let's let's proceed. <clears throat> you can all just right. call me Chief, if that's all right with you, sir. Uh, very good, Chief. Let's let's set up your transporter enhancers, and Cartwright will sort of clumsily fumble with the transporter enhancer in his massive clawed hands. <clears throat> I know how you feel. It is a constant struggle, is it not? Yeah, they're not very uh, uh, alternate digit friendly. No, uh, the the only complaint I have about the Federation, really, is that they just don't design things for, well, properly robust hands. 
I feel you mm. right here in my heart. All right. So you guys set up the transporter enhancers in that classic triangle fashion and you turn them and the little beam that connects all of them uh, sort of hums to life. And uh, Zeke, since this is what you do, I'd like you to roll me a control in an engineering. The runabout will assist you. So if someone can just roll me a D20 less than eight for the runabout, uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. So no help from the runabout, unfortunately. Yeah, borrow momentum. Okay. Uh, engineering. And that gives me three dice and a focus and submit. You get three successes. You get that momentum right back. So uh, what happens is you sort of tap your comm badge, the computer on the runabout, you know, applies or replies that the sequence is ready, you know, standard Starfleet jargon here. Um, but as the crates begin to materialize, uh, what you're noticing is that there's almost like a slow sort of, how to say this, there's almost like a slow snow being mixed into the, the transporter signal. And when the crates materialize, they're intact, but they're covered in snow. This is really strange. Well, you didn't have any uh, freeze stuff in the cargo, did you? The inventory doesn't say there's something reactive like this for transporters. No, there shouldn't be. She's going to scan it. Okay. Roll me a uh, reason science difficulty of, let's say difficulty one. Okay. Zeke will assist because he's also scanning it. All right. Zeke will assist with a reason engineering. Forensic science. I'll give it to you. Thank you. So Zeke doesn't even have to roll because Alel has failed. So uh, Alel, your tricorder is like, yeah, that's snow. And it's not more helpful than that. <laughs> yep, it's just snow. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's it's, maybe there's some kind of interference that uh, intercepted the transporter beam. Could be some weird snow. I wonder, Truman Zikatharix, might it be possible that the transporter beam was in some sense deflected by, I don't know, some kind of latticework in crystal, of crystals inside the cave itself, causing it to momentarily materialize outside of the network of caves and then bounce back in here? Totally possible. We have to scan for some kind of lattice work that would do that. And uh, I'm just going to go through this again to make sure nothing got damaged. And if nothing's damaged, we'll chalk it up to weird. Sounds good. In the meantime, Lieutenant Tavi, I know you've been stretching your engineering legs a little bit. Can you give me a quick scan of this building to make sure that their power systems are compatible with Federation technology? Sure. I, I've been studying up on power systems. I've been talking to Zero a whole lot. All right. Well, Tavi, you're going to do a uh, reason engineering difficulty of one. And if you've got power systems, it applies. <laughs> and I do have power systems. <laughs> and uh, Tavi's tried to uh, impress his boss, so he's going to use a momentum. Okay. Two successes, you get that momentum right back. Uh, yeah, so actually it seems that all you really need to do is just do a little bit of conversion on the EPS conduits uh, flow, and uh, you should be able to work with uh, Starfleet standard, as it were. Um, sort of like going between, and I'm going to date myself here, sort of like going between uh, British, I think Britain and Europe uses, what, 220, and America uses 120. So as long as you've got a converter in the mix, you're golden. All right, yeah, all I got to do is uh, put in this uh, little converter box and uh, he's uh, he's messing with it and grabbing everything and he ends up putting it and uh, wraps it up in some electrical tape for some uh, effect. Hey, there we go. Excellent, Lieutenant. Fine work. 
So Zeke, because I know you're going to ask, yes, everything is intact. It's just covered in snow. Everything looks good here, Commander. Well, let's chalk it up to weird. Weird it is. Don't they have like a chief medical officer here or something? I wonder why they're not here. Well, the ambassador did mention. I know it was the ambassador, but you don't think it's the same person. Well, no, it's not the same person, but I think maybe there's some, I don't know, ribbon cutting ceremony or the equivalent on this planet. Or Or an open position or something. You're really angling for a job here. I mean, look how nice this is. This is so much bigger than the sick bay on the Fenrir. It's true, but it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, just wait till the, the keto goes out. You're going to freeze. Oh, do you think they're... Uh... <gasps> I think they're making a party for us. That would be really cool. I wish I would have worn something different if it's a party. <laughs> All I have is a cloak. What am I going to do? I got nothing. Sure. Um, GM, can we... Do we have access to, say, an itinerary, or you know, or anything like that? Any any sort of, I guess, elaboration on whether or not somebody's supposed to be here to meet us, or all of that was supposed to come with the ambassador, but the ambassador hasn't shown up yet. Mm. Right. Anybody got a deck of cards? Uh, Lel will approach the medical storage units and start unloading things. Okay. And organizing them. <laughs> well, um, and sorry, Jim, how, how are we pronouncing the last name of the ambassador again? Whatever floats your boat, I'm just going to call him Isa. Isa? All right. Uh, William's just going to tap his comm badge and say, uh, Williams to Ambassador Isa. There's a pause. Maybe about 30 seconds pass, and you're starting to wonder, is my signal being blocked? And you maybe go to start tapping it again. And right as you're about to tap, you get a reply. And uh, it actually doesn't come in the form of a communication off of your comm badge. It comes in the form of a physical voice coming from the entrance behind you. And uh, you turn to look, and none other than Ambassador Isaken is there to meet you. Now, Ambassador Isa is a actually well-distinguished gentleman. Uh, he is, of course, not wearing a tuxedo. He is in probably Ambassador White's. Um, but he has a very defined face. He has a beard, a chin strap beard that goes into a goatee. Uh, he has a very prominent chin, almost pointed. And uh, he has grays at his temples, but otherwise his hair is quite immaculate. And uh, he sort of says... Uh, Sorry, sorry, I'm late. Uh, as I said, I had a few priors. Uh, I see you're already getting to work. Any motions at allow? Ha! Oh, I'm so sorry. I um, I thought, I thought you. I didn't know you were our ambassador. Well, yeah, I, I were, mean, you were their ambassador. No, 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 no. See, I'm I'm supposed to oversee all the Federation interests on the planet. Oh, okay. Um, well, yes, I got started early. Sorry. I like your gumption, Missy. You should continue doing that. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, what can I do for you, Williams? Of course, I, I have your... And he starts patting himself down. I have your itinerary here somewhere. Ah, here it is. And uh, he pulls out from a concealed <laughs> pocket, uh, pulls out a small little pad-like device and uh, offers it out to you. Thank you, Ambassador. This is actually what I was contacted you for. For I just wanted to know what kind of timetable we were working with. All right. So without needing a roll, Williams, you look at the itinerary and it literally has two bullet points. The first is set up. That's all it says is set up. <laughs> it's supposed to take six hours, quote unquote. And then the next bullet point is high society function, three hours. That's all it says. Six hours it is. Did the did the Savonians have any preferred configuration to their medical setup that we know of? Well, to put it lightly, they are um, 
An interesting species. Uh, I find their culture very warm. And uh, again, without using the word interesting, interesting. But uh, in terms of medical stuff, I mean, I once went into one of their hospitals on a visit, and I would say that they maybe had a more of a Bajoran feel to their clinics. But uh, I mean, this is a Federation clinic, so I would say set it up to Federation standard. Sure, but will it not be, at least in the early going, crewed by Savonians? Oh, right. Uh, they probably didn't tell you. So about a week from now, we actually have a transport ship, the USS Hermes. They will be dropping off not only a medical staff, but also a number of um, personal goods I've had transferred from back home. Well, very good ambassador. We'll set it up to Federation standard. And um, sorry, what's a what sort of high society gathering is point number two so he actually uh he gets a little bit more animated and he uh starts to smile very warmly and very large you know showing his teeth and he says well that's the actually best part of all this i have managed to secure us a spot in one of the premier nobleman society functions for the evening uh hosting is the lovely Miss Bosland and, or Bosisland, sorry. Uh, I'll spell it in chat in a second. Uh, Miss Bosisland is, of course, gracious to have the Federation ambassador and his plus ones, he motions at all you, at her function. And um, he actually pauses and looks at Zeke. You're going to need something better than that. Better than my uniform? You're going to need to look a little bit more fancy. Hello, I got to go clothes shopping again. I got to go clothes shopping. You know, this is why they say pimping ain't easy. I don't know what that word means. Nice. <laughs> it, I think it's an R thing. Got right. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll explain on the shuttle ride back. Very good, sir, as you wish. Um, would Starfleet dress uniforms be appropriate for this uh, soiree? If you brought them. Well, I assume that we'd simply replicate them, but... Um... Now, nah, you know, you'll figure it out. I'm sure it'll be fine. And uh, he goes for one of those two familiar pats on Cartwright's shoulder. And it you just feel a little bit like, eh. Hmm. Well, I, I feel that way about most humans. So, nonetheless... <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. Ambassador, I'm sure you're busy. We wouldn't want to hold you up. Nah, I already like to see that your intu intuition is correct. Uh, yes, I will see you this evening at the societal function. Uh, you'll want to come to this building here, and he provides you a set of directions. Very good, sir. Um, what time? Let's say... Well, let's see. Converting for the time on the planet. You want to be there at Federation Standard 1700. 1700 it is. And uh, he starts to turn to leave and he says, oh, uh, one thing you should know about Faruni, and Faruni being the name of the city you're in, is that uh, relies on geothermal power. So um, the closer you get to the center of the city, the more warm it gets. So be prepared for that. How close will we be tonight? Pretty much in the thick of it. What temperature? I'm told it is a balmy three degrees centigrade. My hey. favorite. Downright tropical. Hmm. Well, I bid you adieu. Good luck with your efforts. And the ambassador steps out and you see waiting for him is a hovered craft uh, not unlike a standard sort of car we would see on Earth, just the wheels have been converted to some sort of anti-grav sled sort of function. And uh, a gentleman, another human, uh, opens the door for the ambassador. The ambassador gets in. Car, or the uh, driver closes the door, walks around the car, gets in the driver's seat, and the vehicle takes off. Uh, yeah. see more humans here than Savonians. 
Zeke will call the shuttle uh, runabout and interface the replicator menu with his tricorder mm -hmm. and then tie in any uh, replicator um, destination through the transporter enhancers. Basically beaming yourself new clothes. Pretty much. Zeke, uh, if you want, go ahead and replicate the dress uniforms um, using thermal pattern Williams 2. Wow, you got a thermal pattern and everything. This guy thinks of everything. This is great. Yeah, I'm totally doing this. All right, so Zeke, I'd like you to roll me a control engineering. I think it's funny, so I'll spend a little bit of threat. Uh, difficulty of three. I just picture us all walking in there with like the imposter voyage uniforms from the, from that episode where everything's just a little bit skewed. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna borrow a momentum. Okay. And uh, I have materialization systems as a focus. That'll work. Ah, crap. So you succeed and you do get your momentum back, but there is a complication. And I think I have the perfect complication. So when you beam in your new clothes, your dress uniforms, you get them. But two things are very odd. One, they're covered in snow. Two, they're three sizes too large. For all of you. Hey, Tavi, can I borrow yours? I think it'll fit me. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, You can use mine. Um, uh, so, Commander, should I just... Uh... Dress as per uh, Starfleet regulations or uh, Clayron regulations? You know, because my race, you know, we, uh, you know, we have a certain attire that we like to wear to uh, formal events. Well, uh, Lieutenant, being that we're here representing Starfleet, but you are also an individual representative of your species. Feel free to. Feel free to dress in your culturally appropriate clothing. Um, just make sure that your pips and comm badge are visible. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Okay. What? What do you? What, I mean, what do you? What do you mean by that? <laughs> oh, it's like uh, you ever been to a Betasoid wedding? Uh. Yeah, they're freezing. So, all right. So, nude is is what you're telling me. Well, that's what we tend to go. But you know, I'll dress like Federation. That's yeah, fine. can we just yeah, let's just err on the side of caution and Starfleet uniform code. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm all furry. I mean it's not like it's weird. GM I ruin actually... it for all of us, Toby. <laughs> What's up, Matthew? I actually have a question. Uh what kind of attire are the uh the Savonians sporting? So I uh I guess I sort of omitted that in my description. So if you were to glance outside at the average passers by um, strangely, the Savonians are actually wearing very little in comparison. Um, they have, of course, some form of a fabric that keeps them modest, or at least modest by Savonian standards. Um, but what you're noticing is that, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. So the female presenting versions of the Savonians have some form of a chest wrap and almost like a, uh, long skirt. The male presenting just have the skirt. And, of course, there are those that don't adhere to this. Um, they are wearing uh, mostly revealing or free-to-the-air sort of accoutrements. Almost like the cold doesn't bother them. Well, uh, Lieutenant Tavi's suggestion might not be as culturally inappropriate as we might suspect under other circumstances. Nonetheless, Commander, I, I'm certain we all agree that we would prefer to be clothed. Seems the civilized thing to do. Well, I think if we're going to be here as Starfleet representatives, then maybe we dress that way. Yeah, of course, sir. Meaning, no offense, Lieutenant Tavi. Oh, that's okay. I was I was kind of thinking about the when in Rome type situation, but that's fine. Sure. Maybe that's something that you can share with us on the next Fenrir Cultural Exchange. Oh, deal. Well, I am not looking forward to getting 
in my dress uniform after unloading all of this stuff, working for six hours straight. I'm going to need to clean up beforehand. I can help you put away stuff. And well, I'm yeah. certain that uh, Crewman Zeke and I will be able to assist you with any heavy lifting. Are you saying I can't lift shit? I'm saying that you're roughly one third the size and one seventh the weight of uh, Crewman Zeke Etherix. Well, yeah, but I can climb good. I put stuff up high. I'll and, lift and you up we'll for the high things. Lieutenant. How about that? That sounds great. I think if we all just knuckle down and do our share, we can shave maybe an hour off that lead time. Should give you plenty of time, Lieutenant, to freshen up for the event. I mean, one could even say we could wrap things up and, and you know, you could take a, a few more minutes, you know, take off a little bit early and get ready. That'd be nice. I'd love to. Oh, but that, I, I digress. That's actually uh, the command is call. <laughs> well, you know, even though Starfleet itself is not a democracy, I'm always open to suggestions. I think that sounds like a great idea if we can swing it. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. Just a little bit of elbow grease and we'll be good. And there's, even though we're on a, a cultural exchange, a diplomatic mission, let's not lose sight of where we are and try to hang on to that sense of wonder. All right. Well, I'm super excited. I can't believe we get to go to a party. I was not expecting I can't that. believe I called it. You got good instincts. Yeah, that's what my mom always said. So it makes you a good security officer. Are you implying that the commander and I are not? I'm no, to... Cartwright, I'm okay. not implying that. I can give someone a compliment without offending you, can't I? No, of course, ma'am. So I just cross-referenced the, the Earth Lexical Index, and this word pimpin is amazing. <laughs> it's a multifaceted word. It can mean anything you need it to mean. Pimpin. And on that note, we're going to do a montage sequence where <laughs> you literally, you know, set up everything, uh, basically put all the supplies away, get the bio beds out, get the screens working. Uh, that's sort of the benefit of Federation technology is that when it works, it works. So, yeah, I would say if you want to give me one momentum, you actually will finish with an hour to spare. Sure thing. All right. So with your hour, hour to spare, of course, you all get ready in your own ways uh, and you arrive at the event, uh, of course, a little bit early because it is fashionable to be early. And I don't have a specific uh, map of underground spires, but if you will imagine, um, you sort of proceed. Let's do it this way. You get a cab of some sort. You get a, a hover vehicle cab. Uh, it resembles a uh, Earth SUV, but more rounded, so almost like a, a floating pill, if you will. Uh, and it's automated. You just tell the, the computer where you want to go, and it takes you there. And as you speed through the streets, uh, what you notice is that the buildings get higher and higher and higher, and the temperature gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And eventually you are in the heart of the city. And you actually have to, like, crane your neck to look up, and you would see not even the tops of the spires. They're that tall. And you definitely see that the spire in question that you were told to arrive at, uh, there is already a, I guess you would call them paparazzi. There are onlookers. There are people taking photos of people getting out of their vehicles, uh, things of that nature. Um, but what you're not seeing is the ambassador and i guess my question is do you get out and wait for the ambassador outside of your vehicle do you stay in the vehicle and wait you know what what is the play here well i think the ambassador probably had designs on us going in there together let's 
let's wait for him. He's probably going to be fashionably late. Amanda, I still have the uh, the runabout tethered into my tricorder. If you need to run a low level sensor sweep of the area, I can get that for you. Excellent idea. Yeah, try to try to localize any human life signs that aren't ours, or and, and. rather mine. All right, Zeke, if you want to roll me a reason and either a science or a medicine, difficulty of three. Would the runabout assist with that? Uh, yeah, the runabout would assist. Uh, they're rolling uh, eight or lower, so if someone wants to do that, D20. You think logistics works here? Logistics would work. And yeah, runabout is assisting you. Doesn't matter, though, because Zeke doesn't roll <laughs> any successes. So, Zeke, I'm going to say when you uh, take your tricorder and link back to the runabout, uh, the runabout returns that it's having difficulty scanning the internal area of the city, especially the center part. Uh, Commander, it looks like there's some kind of moderate interference preventing the sensors from penetrating the facility. Uh, got no human life signs. All right, then we'll we'll give him a few more minutes, and then we'll we'll head on in. Why don't you Zeke just is, try and get a hold of him? Valid. So Williams will tap his com badge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Williams to Ambassador Isa. Nothing. Uh, I just wanted gun. to take a moment and tell you, LL, that uh, you're the bee's knees today. You look really nice. Thank you, Tabby. For a denobulin. I must say, Lieutenant Tabby, your entire means of elocution is entirely incomprehensible to me. We really must uh, take you and, no offense, Truman, Zekatherix, but both of you, and uh, we'll work on that a little bit. Right. The rock in Crocticale Brock is served mainly on the dock, you see. Yeah, you Look guys can at, do it over tea. Look at him, Tavi. He's given us lessons. Of what a pimping gentleman this guy is. We have to cut that out as well. I, I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. Uh, gentleman is a nice person on earth, from what I'm told. Oh, well, th that's perfectly fine. <clears throat> um, yeah, we we'll try to raise the ambassador a couple more times. Nothing. Okay. Uh, and he'll tap his combat one last time and say, Williams to anyone in the Federation ambassadorial staff. Nothing. Um, is this where I say called it again? <laughs> um, computer. How cold is it outside? Uh, the computer of the taxi cab relays that it's approximately 1.5 degrees centigrade outside. So freezing. Yeah, Almost barely above freezing. freezing. If, could the center, sensor interference in some way be playing havoc with our communicators? Possibly. Uh, but I bet this taxi cab has a map to the uh, Federation uh, ambassadorial complex. I mean, unless he got here before we did and is already That's inside. True. Yeah. Olel oh. is going to like look outside and see if she can get the vibe of if people are going in, mm -hmm. if they're just hanging out, if they're like dressed in what was described to her as the typical outfits to go to something like this. Like, yeah, I gotcha. And I was waiting for someone to ask that. Uh, so roll me a insight con difficulty of two. Momentum. Forensic science. No forensic <laughs> science for this one. You do have four momentum though. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a moment so I'm in roll three. Whoop. 
one success, but I'll tell you what, I will take the two threat and let that succeed at cost. So, Alel, you uh, glance out of the window of the taxi cab, and what you notice is actually a stark departure from the Savonians you saw earlier. Um, The Savonians here are actually almost overburdened with clothes, almost as if it's a societal statement that the more important you are, the more clothes you can afford, that sort of a thing. Um, And you're seeing not only like fashionable uh, sort of vests of opulent colors, uh, there's some prismatic jewelry jewelry that they're wearing, Um, the sort of tendrils that make up the back part of their head have been stylized in certain ways. Um, And what you're noticing is that people are going in, uh, but there are two large Savonians in uh, black sort of garb, almost like a jumpsuit uh, with not fur collars um, and pauldrons, but something approaching fur. You're not quite sure. Maybe it's a fungus, Um, but they are sort of checking the people against a list as they go in. Okay. Huh. Um looks like people are 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 going in. Um we should just go. We can just ask them at the door. Yeah. We'll just tell them we're with him, right? Check with the bouncers. I mean I can't imagine there'd be very many Starfleet officers attending this thing. In fact, Commander, if I may, might we wish to check the uh, crew manifest of the officers or Federation personnel who've been assigned to this planet? I mean, certainly the ambassador has a staff. Maybe we could well, contact them in addition to checking the uh, the individuals who are attending this soiree. We can certainly check them against the the guest list, maybe, but I tried to raise them on the comms. Nobody's answering. There may only be one or two people to answer, depending on the number of Federation personnel that have been stationed here. True. Very good, Lieutenant. Make it so. Uh, very good, sir. Might I be able to uh, to just call up the information regarding the number of Federation personnel who have been assigned here? Freely. And you see that it is literally two individuals, the ambassador and his aide. The aide being the other human you saw earlier uh, doing the whole vehicle, uh, what's the word, uh, chauffeur sort of thing. Hmm. Hmm. Well, sir, I was actually <laughs> exactly accurate. There are only two people, uh, well, two humans on the planet other than yourself. Well, let's see if those two humans are inside, and if not, we may have to regroup. We'll figure it out. We're officers. What's the worst so- that could happen? Except for Zeke. <laughs> I'm, I re- resembled that remark. <laughs> That's the spirit, Lieutenant. Let's, uh, let's hold check your it breath out. in the cold. It makes it easier. That's what I heard. Yeah, we don't have anything to worry about. We've got a great leader. Yeah. <laughs> and as right, William freaks going. out in the inside, <laughs> you uh, you step out of the taxi cab, and uh, almost immediately the uh, wannabe socialites, quote unquote immediately turn their attention to you and they begin shouting at you things like, Hey, Hey, are, are you the Federation types who send out the clinic or things like, Hey, Hey, I, I was, I wanted to meet one of you guys. Uh, you lizard guy, you look pretty cool. And then a uh, few shout, Oh my God, look, it's a little rodent thing. It's adorable. And then they look at Cartwright and they go, I have no idea what that is, but it's cool looking. Right. Would chitter in response. Mm-hmm. But I, if I understand correctly, you're going to ignore the paparazzi and go straight up to the bouncers. Yes. All right. So the bouncers uh, barely even uh, look at you with two of their eyes and they say, name? Commander R.J. Williams, USS Fenrir. And he actually goes through his paper list very meticulously. Not on the list, buddy. Wow. Um, we're here with Ambassador Issa. He's on the list. Well, has he already gone inside? Nope. Where is plus ones? 
Yeah, just like those groupies over there are his plus ones. And uh, you actually look and there are some quote unquote scantily clad uh, wannabe socialites that are like, yay, let us in. You know, standard, you know, college girl type attitudes to the whole affair. Zeke will lean over to uh, to Liz. Commander, I can try to beam them away from us if you still need to get in. Uh, no, Zeke, that's that's fine. Hang on to that trump card. We may need it later. All right, so we aren't on the list. Really? It's, it's, a lot of Starfleet officers trying to get into this do. And uh, the bouncer just doesn't even give you a reply. He just flips back his list and goes back to just arms crossed, just standing there. Meticulous. Maybe we should have brought a velvet rope as a gift. We were setting up the medical clinic earlier. We came to help you all. Nothing. Do you, just continue do you to know, stare. It's do you know, freezing. <laughs> do you know who this is? He points at LL. You you should you should really let us in. I mean, she she is known across the quadrant. <clears throat> He's right. <laughs> I'm gonna need I'm Tommy to roll me a presence <laughs> command. Difficulty of four. LL may assist with her own presence command. And uh, you probably want to not fail this one. Uh, I'll use all three of the momentum. Okay. <laughs> um. So can I top um, value? Uh, no, actually, as a assisting character, you cannot use determination. <laughs> can, can I, uh, you know... Uh, this is a stretch, but escape and avoidance as a focus? I'll give it to you. <laughs> That's very generous. <laughs> I've allowed generous. sillier things. Yes. Who's I'm assisting? You're assisting, yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Right. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh yes. yeah. Yep. What? I have a perfect value. <laughs> so, Tavi, the bouncer not only uh, undoes his arms and starts reaching for you, but he actually, like, grips, like, the front of your uniform and unceremoniously tosses you uh, away from everybody else. And the other bouncer goes, all right, move along, move along. You're not coming in. And they more or less sort of shepherd you back to the, the taxi cab before returning to their spot. Wow. And if anything, this is just making the paparazzi even more fervently. They're like, hey, hey, why did you get kicked out? What's going on? Is uh, is are, are the, the noble born not a fan of Starfleet? What's what's going on? You know, things like that. Uh, I'm sorry, Commander. I'm I'm just not the very good wordsmith. No. Uh, are you all right? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, nothing that LL can't look at. He kind of stares at her dreamily. <laughs> right. Um, listen, I think if we have any hope getting in here, we need to locate the ambassador. And what's more, I'm concerned. He seemed wholly focused on this social function and the fact that he's not here. Well, I don't like to dwell on worst case scenarios, but I think we need to locate him ASAP. Well, it's not going to be easy. His itinerary had two, two things on it. No, he set up didn't. and functioned. <laughs> you think we should go back to base? Um, I might be able to rig the transporter enhancers to run a sensor line and maybe cut through some of this interference. I think that's wise. Maybe we can contact somebody in the Savonian government to find out who his point of contact was. Maybe we can tr retrace his steps. It might also behoove us to take a direct approach and visit the uh, well, ambassador's quarters or the Federation consulate. Yeah, yeah. Where's our embassy? That's true. 
do we GM? Do we know where that is? He you would. Uh, it's about three blocks down. Oh, that's conveniently located. Oh, yeah, we can we can stop there first. Well, it's. I guess we will get back at the taxi. Don't want to go for a vigorous and brisk constitutional, sir. Uh, for Zeke's case, I'd you know for for his sake rather, I'd I'd rather avoid it. He can keep a stiff upper lip. I don't even think that it's he can move it. It seems frozen. <laughs> so you get in the, the taxi, go three blocks, and uh, the consulate is actually sort of a two-story building that's sort of smushed between these grand spires. And uh, what you notice is that the lights are not on in the consulate right now. Uh, of course, there is the United Federation of Planets logo over the door, but not even like running lights are on. There's no lights whatsoever. Oh. Uh, I would say that is decidedly peculiar. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Everybody stay alert. Let's take a look inside. Can I run a local sensor sweep for uh, incoming power to see if there's like a power main that's been cut or... Something like that? Yeah, roll me a reason engineering difficulty of one. Logistics? Yeah, I'll give it to you. I can see it working. Unfortunately, the answer is you don't know. Sorry, Commander. All I'm picking up here is a ton of snow. Yeah, stands to reason. Let's let's get inside and see if we can assess the situation a little. All right. So you step up to the double doors, and like Federation standard ones or Starfleet standard ones, they sort of go the ch noise. And uh, immediately inside, you see that the place is in entirely disarray. Um, the front desk has been overturned. The chair has been embedded into one of the walls. Uh, there are what look to be uh, pockmarks in the walls on all sides of this room. And you're also noticing that a few of the ceiling tiles have fallen. Uh, the lights, such as they are, are sort of hanging and just sort of waving back and forth a little bit. And they're flickering. But... Um, yeah, definitely looks like this place got hit, is what I would say. Uh, Tommy goes straight into, like, being very serious, and he is going around and uh, investigating and, and looking for any signs of, uh, any signs that he can find of maybe who came here, when they came here, that kind of information. Gotcha. Uh, go ahead and roll me a insight security uh, difficulty of two. And once again, because he's trying to impress his boss, I'll give you a threat for an extra tie. All righty. <laughs> oh, uh. Tell you what, I'll take threat <laughs> so that you can succeed at cost. So, Tavi, you, of course, case the joint, and you learn several things that are of varying levels of importance. The first thing is that the pockmarks in the wall are actually like projectiles that have been fired from a weapon. Uh, so it probably stands to reason that someone here was using projectile weapons. Um, the next thing that you notice are is there is no sign of a struggle. There's no like blood spatters. There's no places where, say, someone got shot up to a high hell. Um you actually aren't seeing any signs that there are any bodies here. Like if you were to look around the desk, maybe even go up to the second floor, you're not seeing anything that would indicate that someone was here when this happened. And then the last thing that you notice is that the ambassador's office has actually not been touched. So the entire rest of the consulate trashed the ambassador office itself perfectly fine. 
he'll pass all this information on to the commander. Well, you know, commander, it it just looks like somebody came in here and, and shot up the place, but they didn't even go to the ambassador's office. And the good news is there's no blood. So that's that's always a positive. Good. There may not be blood, but there may be some physical evidence. Other than that, Aperture Lieutenant. Go ahead, Dag. I think you were saying something. Sorry, I was asking what the temperature in the embassy was. Uh, probably about 1C. Is there a functioning computer? If you give me... Oh, I guess you don't have any momentum. If you give me two threat, there is. <laughs> do we want to do it on our own, or do we want to give him threat and get some help? Let's, yeah, let's try to do this on our own. <laughs> now what i would thing. say as a caveat is if you don't want to give me the two threat zeke or someone else could attempt to repair a computer hmm. would that be power systems arguably yes oh i'll try to repair a computer all righty so tavi i want you to give me a daring in engineering uh difficulty of two and you could be assisted by one other person not me. I'll lend an assist. All right, so you two will be rolling a daring engineering there, Zeke. <laughs> Which doesn't matter because Tavi didn't get any successes. Gosh, why are we rolling so bad tonight? I don't know. Because Apparently, it's different. Like last week was great. I mean, we have a uh, you know we have characters. we have a uh, we are lower uh, decks here. <laughs> we have a different uh, commander with us. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so um, I'm going to say that, Tavi, your eagerness actually works against you. And rather than get the computer working again, it just goes poof in a puff of smoke oh and a few God. sparks shoot out. Uh, they sabotaged the computer, Commander. Maybe there's a secondary console in the ambassador's office. Um, mm. Lieutenant Tavi... And Lieutenant Cartwright, can you sweep the rest of the building? Make sure nobody's lingering. Aye, aye sir. As Cartwright is leaving, um, I'd like to mm -hmm. actually take a look at the bullet holes. Mm -hmm. Does it look as if they have actually been targeting something, or is it just like a random spray? Are they focused in a particular area that would suggest that they're trying to shoot over cover or that they're targeting somebody that's standing in a particular location? And what would that location be? Yeah. Why don't you do a insight security difficulty of one? I'm not even going to try to argue for a focus. <laughs> I've accepted crazy things. Hey, two successes, nice. one momentum for you. So I guess sort of good news, bad news. The good news is that it looks like it's just an indiscriminate spray, um, but it doesn't look like it came from a specific spot. If anything, it looks like someone came in here and like a hyperactive dog having zoomies, just sort of ran in circles spraying with their weapon. <laughs> hmm. Commander, I, I suspect that this might have been some kind of almost act of vandalism rather than a targeted assault against our officers, there doesn't seem to be any pattern or series of motives to the, well, the damage that's been done. Or it's made to look you, as such. You may be right. Um, Lieutenant Allel, can you establish forensically if any of the consulate staff were here at the time of this attack? I can scan for, you know, varying... Uh, life signs see if i can pick anything up please do all right so lel reason medicine difficulty of one and yes forensics would apply one and unfortunately you got Gosh, nothing oh, you inept <laughs> This is so lower decks. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Commander Williams, I there's I can't say. I'm not picking anything up. All right. 
We should go look at the ambassador's desk and see if he was yeah. working on anything that could have give us a clue. Agreed. And he may have a working console. We may be able to access the internal sensors to give us a better idea. All right. So as Tavi and uh, Cartwright go and start to sort of comb the place, I'm assuming Zeke, Alel, and Williams, you head to the ambassador's office. And what you're seeing is that the ambassador's office is already a pretty opulent affair. Um, there is a real, like, heavy wooden oak desk uh, there that definitely had to have come from off-world. Um, the chair is high-backed and extremely cushy. Uh, there are some ornate uh, art pieces, uh, some form of sculptures. They're abstract. Um, you also see that there are pictures of what looks to be a Hawaiian uh, sort of vista, you know, like looking out from one of the volcanoes. Um, but you are in luck that when you go to test the ambassador's computer, it turns on. And when it does so, the following appears on the screen. And I actually have to look at my notes for this because I got to tell you the right thing. So you see that running on the computer is a trace of the ambassador as if this is some sort of pre-generated sort of program, if you will. And the program is reporting that it has found a single match. All right. Hmm. Can we get a location? So if you were to tap the screen and sort of access that one match, what you see is a view from what must be a traffic camera. And it's focused on an intersection, uh, not too far from the consulate. And you see the ambassador's vehicle, uh, just so we have sort of a delineating fact here. We'll say that the uh, ambassador's vehicle was like a, a bright red. Um, so you're, you're, you're very easily able to pick it out. Uh, but what you see is that this red vehicle is pulled over by what are basically the local constabulatory. Um, the Savonians uh, police forces, they get out of their vehicles. They go up to the window, sort of rap on it with their knuckles. The window rolls down. The ambassador looks like he's shouting something at the police. Then the window goes back up. The police get back in their vehicles and then instead of just leaving, what happens is the ambassador is almost forcibly escorted by these vehicles back the way he came towards the clinic. What's the timestamp on that? The timestamp on that is actually about one hour after he left your clinic. Hmm. He mentioned that there was a transport of personal effects coming along with the medical staff earlier. I'm wondering if that has something to do with this. As I understand it, the medical staff and his personal effects weren't scheduled to arrive for another week or so. Um, GM, can we get, so if these are, say, official vehicles, law enforcement vehicles, mm -hmm. do they have any sort of, you know, specific markings, like, say, you know, like car 102 or, or something along that line that we may be able to, to track through the local authorities? Yeah. Why don't you roll me a insight security difficulty of one? I guess I'll put us on theater of the mind because that's where we've been. I am going to spend that momentum. Okay. For an extra d20. Unfortunately, don't have any applicable focuses here. Hey, three successes. That means Finally. two momentum. So, uh, good news, bad news. Which one do you want first? Give me the good news first. Good news. You actually are able to trace the police vehicles to a point actually a few blocks from the clinic. And by doing so, you find another traffic camera feed. And what you see is that the police escort leads the ambassador's vehicle into what is essentially an empty lot. And then the feed glitches out and otherwise doesn't display any meaningful data. Um, and this lasts for maybe about a minute. 
But after that minute returns, uh, the police vehicles leave. And then a minute later, the ambassador's vehicle leaves. Can we get, can we maybe follow this breadcrumb trail and hmm, follow the ambassador's vehicle mm -hmm. uh, if we have like an approximate direction? Yeah. Uh, I would say that what you find, uh, trace, in fact, give me a momentum and I will, I will give you this. Sure. Yeah. Um, so you're able to trace the ambassador's vehicle. And you see that it is quite literally taken to the spaceport and a sort of a transport comes in, picks up the vehicle and flies off to parts unknown. Mm. What the hell is going on on this planet? And on that note, we're going to take our 10 minute break. So we will be back in about 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around. Be back.
Geeks gotta, of the gotta, Pioneers man myself. All right, and welcome back from break. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, we're in the middle of a murder mystery starring the Lower Decks crew. Uh, an ambassador has gone missing on a world that was applying to be a Federation protectorate. So kind of a bad thing that an ambassador has gone missing. And the players have just discovered that there is some form of potential foul play involved. And we're going to resume with everyone uh, convening in the ambassador's office. Yeah, and we're rolling great. Yeah, the rolls have been pretty bad. Lel's going to like open his desk and mm -hmm. rummage through it. Look for any false bottoms. Roll me a insight and security difficulty of one. I'm going to assist because, well, we suck. <laughs> sure. Tavi may assist with his own insight security. Forensic science. I'll give you forensic science. Thank God. Don't you have a security of one? Yes. <laughs> she does it to feel better, clearly. See, look oh. at that. She gets three successes. She's fine. Bam, 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 and I do it again. So you actually get two momentum. <laughs> and uh, this is where we get into a little bit of heavy stuff. So, Alel, you do find a false bottom in the bottom cabinet. And what you find is maybe a little bit disturbing. And this is sort of your warning. If you've got a trigger about rape, sexual content, this is your trigger warning. What you find is illicit pictures of a Savonian. And I already described earlier that, you know, sort of the everyday clothes were not a, mu a whole lot. This is a step further from that. I'm not going to go into great detail, but these are the type of photos you do not want an ambassador to have. Are they physical pictures that are printed? They are physical printed pictures, yes. But you also find a pad with all of the pictures on them. So she's yeah. gonna like lift them up, and her she'll kind of go pale a little bit, and um, be like, "Commander, you should see this." And Williams will go over, take one look at the contents of the pad and the pictures, shake his head. Um, and pull out a pad of his own. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a twofold investigation now. Kidnapping, or the potential kidnapping of the ambassador, and a misconduct investigation. You get a scan of that. Uh... Is that material to, for any kind of DNA traces on it? You certainly may. Uh, Zeke, why don't you... And it's great, because you guys are always doing, like... It should be Alel doing the medicine, but it's Zeke, and, you know, <laughs> Tavi should be doing the security. Uh, if Zeke could give me a insight or reason plus medicine, please. Difficulty of one. I'd definitely take a momentum for that. Um, can... Can will Williams take... can Williams assist mm -hmm. by sort of asking LL's opinion? My reason for this is I have a focus. I know they don't really apply this way, but I have a focus called team dynamics. Okay. I sort of want to get these two to put their heads together. So maybe we get LL to to assist or you know or, or whatever. Basically, bottom line, I want somebody to assist Zeke in this role. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we need all the help we can get. I feel like it should be LL. Uh, why doesn't Williams give me a presence and a command? Oh, dear. And again, you're assisting, so just the one die. And I will take a momentum for three. Okay. Oop. All right, so no help from Williams. And That's wow. Cool. Wow, God. that is uh, not only no successes, but another complication. Uh, I think the way I'm going to roll this is, yeah, you find DNA. But uh, again, without going into detail, you know how if you take a black light and you go over somebody's special place? Nope, nope, nope. Yup, yup, 
No. This okay. is not the pimpin' I signed up for. Oh. Okay, this. Allow. Uh, can I get a second opinion over here? Of course. Uh, I mean, Lieutenant, uh, of course, respectfully, sir. I shall scan it. You get the same thing. Mm. Uh, is there is there any kind of database that we could appeal to uh, to take the image or the, the picture of the individual's face mm -hmm. and match that? So is there some kind of centralized database from the planet that we could liaise with or link up to? Yeah, that's actually not a is? bad idea. Um, well, because this is the future of, uh, of Trek and we want to have a working computer network of such... Why don't we have you do a control and a security, a uh, difficulty of two, and if you're successful, you can actually check the uh, one of the police databases on the planet. Can I assist my good friend Cartwright? Can you tell me how? Uh, he's going to... Uh, that's a good question. Uh... We can also use the um, create advantage momentum spend here. You could do that. To just say that there is a, a database and then make it lazier on ourselves. Well, Cartwright has a 15 in control security. Oof. So. Oh, yeah. there you go. All right. Um, watch, I will watch this. <laughs> yes. Watch two complications come in. Uh, <laughs> I will buy an extra die. Okay. For 3D20. And I'm assuming that uh, Starfleet protocol does not help me here. Unfortunately not. All right, you get your two successes, which is important. So you actually do get a hit, and that's very good and very bad. Good because you obviously know the victim. Bad because of who the victim is. And the victim is actually a younger sister of Miss Bose's slang, or the one who was throwing the high society event that I dropped earlier. Oh, well, um, it seems that our ambassador, uh, in addition to his um, revolting proclivities, um, was also a bit of a fool. Uh, it seems as if the individual who arranged the uh, gathering that we were going to participate in was uh, also the older sister of the individual depicted in these uh, abhorrent pictures. <clears throat> well, can you check any kind of news network for her going missing and when that might have been if you gave me a momentum sure all right yeah she's been reported missing for three days and actually if you were as part of this momentum spend if you check the timestamp of the abhorrent images with the going missing it matches up This is horrifying. You think the ambassador kidnapped this kid? I don't know, but it's it's imperative that we find them both. Does the um, report say anything about last known whereabouts? Yes, the last known whereabouts of the younger sister... Uh, I'll give her a name in a moment because I'd have to go through my list here. Um, their last known whereabouts were actually in the area of the clinic. As in within a block or two. Well, I wonder if the clinic was selected to be where it is because of all of this. Wait, are the pictures, can you see the background? Like, is it in the clinic? Well, now that you've asked, yes. Of course, this is before you arrived, but yes. All right, back to Fenrir. Let's call the Commodore. <laughs> uh, this seems to be a time-sensitive issue, uh, Krubin Zikathrix. That might not be wise. 
I think Same. we should go back to the clinic and see if we can pick up any additional information there. And I'm pretty sure uh, Commander can uh, handle this uh, thing. Well, we're about to find out. So as you are exiting the ambassadorial office, uh, you actually hear like the crunch of glass and you look around the corner as you come downstairs and you see that there is a Savonian uh, forensics team as well as police officers there. Um, they are clad in a blue jumpsuit uh, with some sort of emblem that is in a almost like a hexagram function that shows that they are, you know, officials. Uh, but one of them is wearing what would be best described as a trench coat. And uh, the trench coated individual goes right up to you, Williams, and says, All right, now I'm going to ask you some very important questions regarding your ambassador. First and foremost, do you know where he is? No, but we're looking for him. Very good. My second question is, are you aware that we have a missing persons report and that your ambassador is a person of interest? Yes, I am. Very good. Then allow me to introduce myself. I am known as Sava. I am a member of the Special Investigations Unit. It is my job to find Miss Bozland's missing sister. I'm Commander R.J. Williams. I'm Chief of Security of the USS Fenrir. We were sent here to oversee the setup of a clinic. Um, but as the ranking Starfleet officer here, and seeing as how this case uh, is directly tied to the Federation, I'll be heading up Starfleet's investigation. I see. I see. I would like to propose a partnership, if you would. It stands to reason that you and I are looking for quite the same thing. Yes, I want to, or we, want to help recover Miss Bosisland's sister and get to the bottom of the ambassador's involvement in any of this. Before I reply, I finally found my list of names in my notes. So the one who threw the party is Bosisland, and her younger sister is Bo's Deer. And I put both of those in Roll20 chat just so that we've got a written note of them. And then the SIV uh, individual that's talking to you, her name is Saba. Uh, we found these in his desk. And Allah will turn over the pad. Turn over the pad. Uh, Saba takes one look at them and just sort of shakes her head and goes... I was afraid of this. Um, how, how well do you know your ambassador? Not well at all. We met earlier today. Well, it is not a good look for the Federation, I will put it bluntly. Your ambassador had a provocativity towards the younger crowd, if you catch my drift. I'm distressed to hear that. That's good, because if you were in any way excited, I would shoot you on the spot. Yes, I imagine so. Listen, Sava. Uh, and sorry, Jim, what's her title? Does she have a title? Uh, she is Special Investigator. Special Investigator. Uh, I'm going to abbreviate that as SI. Um, listen, uh, SI Sava. I understand that this doesn't cast the Federation in the most favorable light. If these, if the evidence proves true, I know it may well jeopardize your planet's protectorate status, the application, any eventual membership. But I want you to know that Starfleet is committed to the truth, however that may look. Well, I will hold you to it. Now then, uh, where were you headed next? Well, we were going to head back to the clinic, but before we do, this 
disturbance and the ambassador's disappearance by all accounts happened hours ago. Yet yeah. you're just showing up now. Well, we did get a report of uh, some form of a drive-by that occurred, and we were following up on that. Seeing you here, though, confirms my suspicions. Very good. Well, uh, I'll be in touch if we find anything. Oh, I'll be coming with you. Every step of the way. We did see... Um footage of him being hauled out of a car near the what was it again where was he uh the clinic but he actually has never been seen getting out of the car or being dragged oh, right out right of the right car. um so that was at the clinic uh near that the wasn't clinic, at yes. the nearest port or something okay okay then that's right never mind i mean i kind of suspect a little bit of uh justified uh, vigilante justice well we'll we'll hold to the evidence lieutenant but oh no I, 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 I agree as I Sava I think uh, it may be best for us to pursue our own avenues of investigation and compare notes after the fact very well which would you like me to tackle Well, we've already taken, uh, we've already compiled a, well, something of a forensics report here. Maybe your team can sweep the building a second time, uh, which point you may pick up something we missed. And she in sort of meantime, snaps her fingers at one of the uh, passersby, says something in Savonian that doesn't quite pass through the universal translator, and... Uh, he says something back again, doesn't translate quite well. And she sort of sighs and says, right, we'll have to bring in extra equipment, but yes, we will comb this place top to bottom. Excellent. In the meantime, we'll be at the clinic and see if we can discover any more evidence there. Um, the clinic, um, how is it related? Well, it was the location the ambassador was nearest um, when he disappeared, so <laughs> standard search pattern is Start at the last known point of contact. Work your way out. It's very also good. Also, the you. background of those pictures. That is a very important detail. Are you telling me that the Federation not only set up a blank spot for your ambassador that you had no knowledge of this? Um, I don't take your meaning. We arrived earlier today and set up the clinic there, but yes, it was already prearranged that was the spot again i must reiterate that this does not cast the federation in a very favorable light the way i see it you all were the cleanup team do you have any evidence to that effect madam no but if there is any such evidence i will find it well you shall fail because there is none but i welcome you to try hmm. you there Officer, and she calls over an officer, go with them, follow them, report back, and if they try anything funny, you have my authorization to bring them in. And uh, the officer and uh, his hexagonal badge displays the name of Thorson, and I, I will put that in chat, uh, says, uh, of course, ma'am, right away. So you've gained a plus one. Very good. Very good. Um, S.I. Sava, before we head back to the clinic, are you aware of any, shall we say, dissident factions among your own people that would not want to see your world enter into any sort of alliance with the Federation? There are those, yes, but they are a very minor group. They are, um, how to put this, they are a vocal minority. Very good. Any of these vocal minority have 
sufficient resources to, well. Do this, motioning yes. around. Yes, I would say that they do. Very good. Uh, your liaison can keep you updated, but I assure you that we'll pursue any avenue as long as it reaches the truth. Very good. Now run along. I believe the clock is ticking. Very good. Well. So my question is, there are two locations in play here. There is the actual clinic itself where the photos were taken. And then there is a empty lot three blocks away where you only saw the partial footage uh, before the vehicle was more or less taken to the spaceport and then the vehicle was taken away. So which of those two locations do you want to go to first? I would say, I mean, for my part, and I'm open to suggestions, the empty lot is his last known location. We know that he was there. If there's any physical evidence of him having been transferred to a different vehicle, we'll find it there. Or there's a, a better chance of us finding it there rather than at the clinic. I would say perhaps uh, we should split up because this gentleman can only follow one of our groups. So if one of our groups is at the clinic looking for, let's say, evidence that a crime did not take place there, or that there was something that's incongruous with the evidence that we can collect there and the photographic evidence we, we've already compiled. And the other one deals with the uh, investigation. I don't know if that's uh, what you want to do. I'm okay with that. Yes. Keep and the one short. thing I would say about splitting the party is if you voice any of this in earshot of either Sava or Thorson, uh, Sava will just get another officer to follow the other party then let's all head back to the clinic okay. and then decide. All right. So you all return to the clinic, supposedly the scene of one of the crimes. And uh, as you step into the clinic, uh, I think it's fair for me to say that the atmosphere has definitely changed. Uh, before, you know, you were sort of in awe at how nice this place was and how it was going to be a you know, a good place for the Federation to do good. Now it doesn't really have that feel. Now it's almost like there's a oppressive air that sort of hangs over the entire place, almost like it has been defiled. It's uh, sterile, cold. Well... I'll uh, do a sweep for any kind of bio signs, excluding, of course, our own. Okay. That's going to be a reason medicine uh, difficulty of two. And forensic science would apply. Thank you. It's actually do a very good momentum? focus. Can I use momentum? Uh, do you have any? I don't think we have any. You'd have to use threat. I will I not say, do that. Do uh, it. I'd say do it. Do Give it. Give him a threat. Do it. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Triple complication. We roll. We, we roll bad. We've been doing that all night. It's good. It's fine. All right. So only the one success here. I'll take threat so you can succeed at cost. Uh, basically what you find is, yes, you do find traces of not just the ambassador, but an unidentified Savonian, but you probably don't need me to tell you that they're linked. And are those the only two? Yes. Actually, no, I take that back. There is, as I look at my notes, a third set of DNA bio signs or residual effects. Uh, a quick search and comparison confirms that the ambassador's uh, liaison, chauffeur, whatever you want to call him, he also was here. And in case you need the chauffeur's name, the chauffeur's name was Thompson. Okay, I'm picking up... Um... 
the victim and the ambassador's life signs, as well as his chauffeur, Thompson. I almost wonder what the chauffeur had to do with it. Good question, Lieutenant. Is there a chance he turned him in? And that's why we saw the car being taken away at such a weird location. Perhaps. And Williams will turn to Cartwright. Uh, so Lieutenant, the transport ship that we have on the closed circuit footage that took the ambassador's vehicle aboard and lifted off. Um, could you try to enhance that image to see if we can find any identifying markings on the ship that may help us track it? Uh, certainly, sir. I'll run it through a recursive algorithm to try to identify key markings on the vessel. Um, someone else may wish to investigate Mr. Thompson. Is there anything in his history or his Federation database profile that might shed some light on his involvement in these events? Excellent idea. Um, Lieutenant Tavi. Yeah, I can dig into that for you. All right. So we have two roles here. We're going to handle them one at a time. Cartwright, you're going to do an insight security uh, difficulty of two. Tavi, after he's done, you're going to do your own insight security also at a difficulty of two. I believe uh, in you both. Starship tactical systems, <laughs> Starfleet protocol, no. I would honestly say that if you were to reverse that and have uh, Cartwright do the look into the ambassador's aid, and then you had Tavi do the ship, um, you would actually have a focus where Cartwright would have that Starfleet protocol as a focus. Okay. Would that still be insight? It would still be insight security, yeah. Okay. Sure. And I will buy an extra die using a point of threat. Why not? Right. That's not going to come back to bite me. Hey, nice. look at that. Four successes, which means you get two momentum. Finally. So you actually don't get much about Thompson. But what you do get confirms a, shall we say, shadowy past. Uh, you see that he has connections with the Syndicate, the Orion Syndicate. You see that he did have a brief stint with Starfleet Intelligence as an asset. And then, for some reason, he ended up as the Ambassador's right-hand man. Hmm. Well, Mr. Thompson has an extensive record of criminality. And I would share that information with the rest of the officers involved. How the hell did he get an ambassadorial staff? Lieutenant, can you... Can you determine if he was requested by the ambassador? Do they have any known prior associations? If you uh, give me a momentum, I want to answer that question. Say, yes. All right. So actually, yes. And it is very interesting, the connection that you find. Uh, don't forget. Don't worry, Tavi. We're going to get to you in a moment. But uh, what we find in this data is that while Thompson was a Starfleet intelligent asset, he was more or less, quote unquote, spying on the Orion Syndicate. And that is where he met the ambassador. Um, now, there's not a whole lot of details of their meeting, but there is a note that shortly after this meeting, uh, the ambassador specifically requested that Thompson be moved to his staff. And if it helps you any, it's a minor detail. But again, minor details could make or break the case. Uh, the minor detail is that this would have occurred in a Orion Syndicate held uh, facility that this meeting took place. So they initially met under the sort of under the umbrella of the Syndicate. Correct. Hmm. 
Mightn't this then be some kind of syndicate plot to interfere with the Federation's operations on this planet? They may have some kind of interest in it. Could be, or it could be payback for a perceived double cross on the part of the ambassador or Thompson. Let's go to Tavi here, because Tavi might gain some additional insight. Tavi, I'd like you to roll me a insight security difficulty of two. And what was the task again, real quick? Uh, it is You are basically focusing in on the vehicle that took away the ambassador's car and trying to see if you can get any sort of signature, markings, things of that nature. So I'm going to try to key in on its uh, power signatures. Sure. Sure, I'll give it to you. <laughs> and I'll use the one momentum that we have. Okay. Oh, God. Unfortunately, why no are we like? Why are we the way we are? <laughs> is all I want to know. Hey, don't look at oh. me. So, uh, Tavi, no luck. No luck, unfortunately. And uh, uh, secondary characters don't have determination, right? Uh, they do have determination if they have a value. Oh, okay. I don't know. We need, we need to talk to Bose's land. <laughs> do you think we could, act, could get access to a celebrity? <laughs> Maybe if it involved the investigation of her younger sister? I know I'd talk. One Question way to find out. Question is, will she talk to us? We could walk up to the bouncer and tell him that we're working for the uh, the constabulary and that we have vital information due to the uh, disappearance of her sister. They might let us in. Better yet, and Williams will turn to the constable that they sent. Constable, we're going to uh, require your services in the interest of mutual cooperation. He just sort of motions for you to continue. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a soiree at Miss Bozislan's estate. We need to get in there and speak to her. Our, he'll sort of motion to the sort of Delta star. Says, Our badges don't carry much weight here, but yours does. Yeah, yeah, I could get you in probably, but um, yeah, I'm not going to tell you how to do your jobs, but I know Sava will tell me my job. Isn't there a location nearby here that we should check out first? It's on the way. Fair. Are and you able to? Uh, are you able to check out uh, just to make sure that there's been no uh, ships leaving recently? Constabulatory nods his head and says, yes, um, I'm going to use this terminal over here, if that's all right. And uh, goes over to the terminal and says, yes, I actually have only one outbound ship. Well, that's interesting. So, Ryan. Of course it is. That's not good. When did it leave? About an hour ago. Tracks. They got any security forces that could intercept and escort the ship back? Mm, I would, but according to what I'm seeing on the screen here, they didn't file a flight plan, so we have no idea where they are. Mightn't the passive sensors on our own runabout have detected their, uh, well, direction of egress? Potentially. Pick up their warp trail. Exactly. And just in case we haven't actually shared the information with the constabulary dude yet, we'll make sure that he knows that uh, Thompson was uh, Orion. Okay. Oh, okay. So Alel's going to like uh, approach the officer with us and be like, so what do you make of this situation? I mean, I don't know your weirdness about Orion's, but I mean, I, I see this as 
pretty uh pretty clear case of vigilante justice gone wrong really it's that simple i mean you're you live here you're from here we're just guests all right but uh we savonians are very proud people we um you don't take very kindly to i guess the word would be deviance oh that's a good word well that understands uh that helps me understand why you fit into the federation or what you will hopefully just so it's known none of us here stand for that either that's good of course what i think of you doesn't matter it's what special investigator sava thinks i didn't ask you what you thought of us i asked you what you thought of the situation he just sort of shrugs uh so yeah we should we should get back to the ship and uh, hurry. Uh, oh, see, can you just transport us to the ship? We yeah, need to I go can't. to the parking lot. <laughs> I, I can. That's not a problem. Uh, just, Commander, I had a recommendation. Um, with your permission, I'd like to tether the runabout sensor scans to um, this officer's central mainframe so that we um, provide some transparency in this investigation. I agree. And Zeke, uh, why don't you roll me a control engineering difficulty of zero? Because you can't fail difficulty zero. Oh, we can. Well, <laughs> you say that. I see Jinx. zero, zero, zero. Jinx. And also, while he's doing that... Can logistics? Oops, I'll give you logistics. <laughs> logistics is a magical word that means many things. It's... <laughs> Tonight, the part of power systems will be played by logistics. <laughs> All right, so two successes. Yeah, you are able to tie in your computers with their computers. Basically give the constable the um, the access codes to our sensor data. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he uh, actually sort of looks at this and goes, All right, well, uh, I know I'm supposed to be watching you, but I think this is more important. Uh... I mean, you're only going, what, a few blocks down as long as you come right back. I mean, there's, there's room on the runabout for you, sir. You know, and he sort of strokes his very large chin and thought and says, right, right, uh, I'll just ping this uh, Sava and let her know. And you see him type up a very quick message on the terminal and send it off and says... Right, um, I believe we have a uh, a parking lot, a lot of some sort to check out before your craft. Bacon lot. Commander? Seek? Uh, your call, sir. We could investigate the vacant lot, or we could use the runabout and take it into orbit to see if we can get a warp trail. Well, the Orion connection is compelling. But we need to follow the protocol. Check the vacant lot first, then beam, direct, beam directly to the runabout. Yes, Blech. sir. If I may, sir, I could double check the runabout's sensor logs, and while I'm doing that, the rest of you could investigate uh, the lot. At least that would give us some indication as to the decaying warp trail that they're no doubt attempting to conceal. Yes, it would cut down on their lead time, too. Excellent idea, Lieutenant. Go ahead. Pretty good. Uh, Crewman Zikatharix, would you be so kind? Yeah, right. let me let me beam you over there, but uh, why don't you leave a comm line open just in case? Yeah, this is a prime example of the person who goes to check things out, gets abducted themselves. <laughs> oh, rest assured, better that of all of us, and you'll forgive me, Commander Williams, I am the least likely to be kidnapped. Never we'll know. <laughs> I don't like what he typed on his communicator. At the to very least, boss. when you get to the runabout, put up a subspace scattering field to deflect any say, surreptitious transporter beams. 
You're good, sir. Surreptitious transport of memes. It's the name of a band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zeke to Damocles, uh, lock on to uh, Lieutenant Cartwright's signal and transport for one. All right. Because I think it'll get you momentum, control engineering difficulty of one assisted by the runabout so someone can roll a d20 eight or lower and guess what <laughs> materialization systems mm-hmm oh wow i was about no. to say three Who complications i land what? on the the, the uh, orion ship well wow. this is just the this is, this is, oh, oh, he doesn't want us to get momentum he just wants threat Okay, so the good news is you get two momentum, but the complication, I know what the complication is. So Cartwright, you beam away, and then you materialize on the runabout, but you're covered in snow. Yeah. It is very cold. <laughs> would, you, would you raise the temperature by 10 degrees, please? Thank you. <clears throat> Zeke to Lieutenant Cartwright, you okay over there? Uh, yes, I, I find that your transporting skills have been greatly exaggerated, and they are somewhat dubious, but uh, nonetheless, I have arrived with all six of my limbs intact, so that's something, I suppose. It's mm. very kind of you. Thank you. And uh, I would like to scan for the, uh, uh, the warp trail of the Orion vessel. Uh, that's going to take some time, so let's go to the rest of the party uh, journeying to this empty lot. And I actually have a map for this, almost like I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. So uh, you all basically go down the, the street, three blocks, and uh, you arrive at a, basically a crossroads. Mm. And I know this doesn't look quite like an empty lot, but basically this sort of area right above you guys... Uh, if you will imagine that that sort of right-hand road doesn't actually continue, so there's sort of a almost like a right-angle junction, this empty sort of line space is where the whole, uh, you know, last known location of the ambassador was. Um, what you're seeing is it's pretty much just an empty lot. Uh, the street is lightly dusted in snow, and you can't really make out any tire tracks or hover tracks or really anything that would indicate a vehicle's been here. Um, but what you might notice is that the lights are all on, but none of the security camera lights are. Well, they... Hmm. Why would the security cameras still be disabled unless they weren't done with their business yet? And uh, Thorson kind of looks at the security cameras and goes, yeah, they they should be working. Why aren't they? Hmm. Are they controlled from the central point in your precinct house? I mean, they all feed back there, but I mean, locally, I guess someone might be disrupting them. But why? Hey, GM, out of curiosity, what color is Thorson's shirt? Thorson's shirt is red. <laughs> and it's funny because as you ask him the color of his shirt, there is a resounding bang. And you look at Thorson's chest. There's a hole through it. No. And he falls over completely dead. As no. you all are now under attack from unknown assailants. So, so we're going to go into initiative order here. Oh my god. Ella would totally try and save him anyway. Uh, you certainly might be able to. You never know. So uh, I'm going to put these guys on the map for sake of clarity. But as far as you know in character, you do not know that they are up there. Um, I'm just going to give each of these guys a turn. Uh, now, my one question is, there's a few ways that we can do uh, initiative. We can either have you guys actually roll for it, uh, or we can do the player enemy, player enemy thing, where you guys get to choose uh, who goes when. I, I like that setup. Okay, so player enemy, player enemy. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as it would be, the players do get to act first. So, what? Uh, who would like to act first, and what are you doing? So here's my first question, mm-hmm. uh, GM. Is there any sort of cover where we are? Uh, yeah, let me point out a few things. So, uh, obviously, you've got street lamps here that you might be able to hide behind. Let me zoom out so the stream can see a little bit better. It better be dummy thick. Yeah, they're not dummy thick, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but this over here looks to be some form of, like, if you know British culture, you know, like, actual police boxes. There's box. something like that here, but it's a cylinder shape. Um, there is an actual alleyway to your west. Um, but yeah, there's just not a whole lot of cover in this area. Oh, if I was only small. Oh, wait, I am. <laughs> um, so I'm happy to have Alil go first because she's going to she's gonna try and revive or save Thorson even if he is dead. She's going to try because it happened so soon. All right. So Alil, uh, this is going to be a first aid task okay. as you almost dive into the guts of this gentleman to try and save him. Mm-hmm. And let me just confirm what first aid is, because I want to be fair to you, uh, rather than make something up that is completely wrong, because this is one of those do or die situations. And of course, if anybody finds it before me, feel free to chip in. All right, so here we are, first aid. Uh, So this is going to be a daring medicine, and this will be a difficulty of one, but the caveat is, is that you succeed, if you succeed, they will not die at the end of the scene, but will basically be stabilized. Okay. Now, um, the will... caveat, or no, I, let me keep reading. So that if you want to get them back into the fight, you could spend two momentum after that success. Okay. So I'm not going to spend momentum now. Okay. Um, but I do have emergency medicine. Most definitely would apply. Please, please. Two successes, you get a point of momentum. You are able to stabilize Thorsa. Awesome. Now, do you want him to get up and help you fight? Um, I mean, she's not going to ask him or have that expectation, but... <laughs> I mean, the um, only reason I ask is because it is a two-momentum spend. Um, No. Okay. Because our players need it. Alrighty then. So uh, you do stabilize him. He remains unconscious. And what's going to happen is that is your turn. So up next is going to be one of the Savonians. Well, and well, normally, they... oh, normally that would be true. Quick to action. Uh, You're right. Williams does have the quick to action talent. So we can retain the initiative. All right. So who is going time. next among the players? I do have a question. Just I might have time. an answer. Is is talking a free action? Talking is a free action as long as you are not quoting Shakespeare. All right. Well, Zeke uh, has an open comm line with Cartwright, and he's basically just going to yell into the comm line, Cartwright, we're taking fire. Would you like me to beam you out of there? Uh, I was hoping you could bring the runabout over here and give us some cover. Oh, uh, very well. Um, would it actually be possible to take the runabout into the midst of the city? I would say it is, but it would be difficult to not hit anything on the way. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I think that this would actually be Commander William's job, but I mean, I could try if he orders me to do it. Command is discretion, sir. All right, right? Yes, sir. We need you. Bring the runabout. The cavalry is on its way, sir. All right, so <laughs> Cartwright, I uh, I need Cartwright to roll me a daring and engineer or daring and con, please. Uh, this is going to be difficult. It initially is going to be a difficulty of three, 
But because I have all this lovely threat, I think I'm going to make it a difficulty of four with a complication range of 16 to 20. The literal definition of the past coming back to haunt you. (laughs) I have noticed that um, RJ has, I think, the crisis management, which allows him to use the direct action. Yes, so he could assist you with a presence command. And I'm going to, because I'm following orders, and this is a really not a great plan, mm-hmm. I'm just ignoring <laughs> the possibility of a horrible catastrophe happening, I'm going to tap my value. His is not to make reply, his not to reason why, his but to do. But to do and die. Yes. Alrighty, so that'll give you two free successes to start off with. And nice. I'll buy an extra die for two. <laughs> okay. Wait, I, can supporting characters use values? Yes. So if you give Alel a value the next time we activate her, she could use determination. Oh, the next that, time. Uh, last mm-hmm. session. That okay. Card was used. Okay, cool. Because I got to go. Hey, look at that. That's a total of uh, five successes. But let me check that zero. That is a complication. So... All of you are, you know, trying to stay low to the ground as bullets and projectiles rain down around you. And then you hear just the sound of a building shattering. And you look and see the runabout literally barreling through a building and coming to land in front of you for cover. Oh, I'm so fired. (laughs) I am a little bit clumsy. I'm afraid the, the controls were set to human configuration, not Gorn configuration. It's not my fault. So, good news, the runabouts here, you may use the runabout as cover. Bad news, it is now the, basically the thug's turn. And the Savonian thug is going to attempt to shoot over the runabout. And, you know what, I'll roll a d4. Who are they shooting at? <laughs> Left or right? They're shooting at Alel. No. So, they're going to hit the Alel. Medic. Alel, I need you to take four stress of damage, please, as a projectile Holy pings shit. you in your left shoulder. Oh, damn. Okay. Also, if you were not at full stress uh, going into this, you should have I been was. at full stress. I was. Okay. I just marked it. So. All right. But the good news is that, oh, wait, I have threat. Another <sighs> thug's going to go. And uh, they're not going to shoot the same target, so I'm just going to roll a d3, to be fair. Uh, That's going to be Mr. Zeke. So, Mr. Zeke, they do not hit you. The bullet barely misses your head. And it's now the player's turn. What kind of projectiles are these? Um, I would say that these are metal slugs. Uh, If I had to do a caliber equivalent, maybe about a forty-five. Or maybe a 9mm would be a better one. Let's do 9mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think this this particular instance, um, Williams is going to go. Okay. Uh, so, GM, can I make it to the sort of um, cover side of the like cockpit portion of the runabout? And... You could. All right. So I'm going to move up to here. Mm-hmm. Um, and can I from here see any of these thugs or at least see like a muzzle flash or something that could give me an approximate location? Yes, I would say that based on your training, uh, you would be able to identify these two up here on the buildings. Okay. Uh, so I will take my hand phaser and shoot at the leftmost Simonian thug. Alrighty, control security, difficulty of two. Okay. All right, and I have augmented control. And out of curiosity, would Williams call out shooters? Ah, uh, yes. Absolutely. The ones I can see, anyway. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to spend a point of momentum to buy an extra D20. Okay. And let's check. I've got hand phasers as a focus. Three successes. You get that point of momentum right back. Actually, it's five. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah, he's got enhanced control. Shouldn't it be four then? Yeah, oh, yeah, four. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. So you would get two momentum. Sorry, my bad. 
No, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up because that's more momentum for you guys. I am going to go ahead and roll my challenge dice. All right. So I'm assuming you have this on non-lethal. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's set to, it's set to stun, but it's set to maximum stun. Gotcha. So uh, you ping the leftmost thug, and in a classic Wilhelm scream, uh, he <laughs> falls off of the building and clunks onto the ground, completely stunned. So he is he is out of combat right now. Anything else, Mr. Williams? Uh, let's see. Now, since this is kind of our first ground combat with extended sort of combat... Um, what you have remaining to you as an option is, uh, giving me two momentum for a swift task. Uh, but that swift task would be at an increased difficulty. Got it. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that, but given the fact that I've moved, would Alel still be considered within close range of me? Probably not, right? Um, I would say, let's say if you were to break out a ruler, anything within two meters is close. Anything okay. close or anything... Medium range is two to about six, okay. and then anything beyond six would be long range. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that that isn't going to work. So that's uh, that's actually going to be all for me. All righty. So next is going to be one of the thugs, and I'm going to give them two additional dice with threat. Not that I needed it, because that's four successes. And this is important, because I need to see who this hits. Uh, you know what? I'll still be fair. I'll roll left to right, 1d4. All right, so that would be Mr. Zeke. Uh, but good news is that you have a runabout providing you some cover. So, Zeke, I need you to roll me three challenge dice, please. And this is going to reduce how much damage is done to you. Okay, so this is kind of bad, but we'll see what happens. So the pistol was doing eight damage. Zeke, behind the runabout, was able to shave off one of those from cover. So Zeke is going to take seven stress of damage and is injured, meaning that they are out of the fight unless Alel does first aid and spends momentum to get them back up. So I'm going to mark Zeke with a red dot to represent that he has been injured. All right, but uh, we now go back to the uh, other part of the away team. I think, Tavi, you were the only one who hasn't acted at this point. So Tavi is going to run over to here, uh, kind of get be get around the corner, and he's going to turn and fire at this guy <laughs> over here. Okay. And I'm going to spend a momentum. Okay. And it's a daring... Uh, control security. Control security. Okay. Difficulty of two. Control security. Three dice. And I do have energy-based small arms technology. Most definitely. <laughs> small arms. He's tiny. <laughs> so the good news is you get two momentum, but there's a complication. We'll deal with that complication in a moment. Go ahead and roll me some damage. And that's eight dice, is it? Uh, for you, if you're using a type two, I believe that is seven. Seven, okay. All right, so that's only doing four damage. Remember, the magic number is five. Do you want to uh -huh. give me momentum to reroll the zeros, do additional damage? Yeah, we'll, we'll do one. Uh, so it's one momentum to reroll three? Yep. Okay, let's do that. And that is enough that uh, you are able to stun the one thug that hasn't fired yet. And they go down hard, but remain on the roof. And uh, Tavi's trying to impress his commander. So he's going to do the whole uh, spend two momentum to shoot again. Okay, so this would be a control security difficulty of three. And he's going to spend a momentum to uh, get an extra die. All right. <laughs> He's just burning momentum. No, it, it could literally turn the tide. Control security. You said difficulty three, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Here we go. 
Oh. All right. So what happens is because you've gotten two complications. So the first time you go to shoot the thug, you do hit him and you stun him and he goes down. When you move to the second thug, the first time you press the button on the phaser, it sort of gives one of those sounds and you kind of smack it a few times, perform some percussive maintenance and you press the button again. And this time you hear the high pitched whine of a phaser overloading. And I'm going to say that I'm going to roll a challenge die. And if I roll an effect, it will detonate in your hands right this second. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rot roll. I did not roll an effect, <sighs> which means on your next turn, you could possibly get rid of this grenade, more or less. Fuck it. But the good news and bad news is it is a new round of combat. However... Because we are doing player, enemy, player. It is now the enemy's turn. And uh, I think the leftmost thug that's still up is going to shoot for Williams. I have enough threat to give him... Let's give him two extra dice. Didn't need it. Uh, So I will reroll two of those zeros. See if it's even worth... Okay, so that is only four damage, but again, you have a runabout between you and the thug, so if you want to roll me three challenge die, see how much you shave off of that. Oh, no whammies. All right, so you are able to completely sort of uh, hide behind the runabout as a projectile pings off the front view screen. Mm. And it is Uh, now the player's turn. Do you mind if I take this turn? Go ahead. All right. So Tavi is going to scamper up the ship Mm -hmm. and he is going to throw that phaser. Okay. For all he's worth right to here. Okay. That would be a control security. Normally a difficulty of two. I have just enough threat to raise that to a difficulty of four. But I will say if you succeed, you will do damage to both of the thugs. All right. And I'll be using a momentum. But, like, there's no way I'm going to get four successes because, you know, I'm not rassed. <laughs> you could give me momentum and threat for a fourth die. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Can somebody assist by dumping the rat full of psilocyanine? <laughs> Good uh, idea, but no. <laughs> I would like not to gonna point, do it. I would like to point out that I am throwing... A energy-based small arms weapon. It'll apply. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. Oh. 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 Tavi doesn't oh, have a value, does he? God. No, he does not. All right. Well, Tavi, this is that time where I have to roll a challenge die. This time it is two dice that I'm rolling. So every turn that passes, I get another challenge die. Okay. Okay, oh. you're still good. So, Tavi, you oh. go to throw it, and maybe you just overestimate how much oomph, and it literally oh. falls out of your hand onto the, the surface of the runabout, and it goes nowhere. It's just at your feet. I just want to do an in-player soliloquy real quick. Like, I really love the fact that we wrote a, a William-centric plot for the Lower <laughs> Decks characters, but if Williams has to go back to Fenrir without us, it's going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I can attest it will be bad for just him. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I just adore how in- utterly incompetent we are all being at this moment. It, <laughs> hey, it Alela's is, is Williams... saving people. Whatever. <laughs> hey, I'm giving you like eight momentum this entire actually, session. So actually, I know. never did. Uh, uh, last time I activated Tavi, I never did actually give him a thing. Okay. If you would allow me to, I would allow you to, but we're gonna say your turn is still passed. Okay. Uh, the good news is that there's only one thug that remains that can shoot. And yeah, I think Tavi, I think you're literally exposed. I think they're going to shoot at you. Uh, they do not hit you actually. So a, uh, oh, bullet pings past you, Tavi. <laughs> He's a god. <laughs> as, as Williams yells, Tavi, serpentine, serpentine. <laughs> Now, Tavi does have the focus of escape and avoidance. <laughs> May come into play. 
But uh, it is now either Alel Williams or Cartwright's turn, because Cartwright technically could do something with the runabout. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Cartwright would actually take a more direct approach to this situation, although if, he, if Commander Williams wanted him to, he would try to recalibrate the phasers to not like decimate the city block and just <laughs> knock the people out. Mm -hmm. mm. No, but he I, would I'm... be inclined to leave the runabout. Um, actually, if yeah, actually, well, I don't have the direct task. So I mean, if talking is a free action, I can make a suggestion, but I can't assist you with it. Correct. Um, Cartwright, is it possible for you to get a transporter lock on that last Savonian? Beam them into an empty compartment in the runabout and erect a level 10 force field. Of note, there are two. Or so beam both of them then. Combine their pattern. <laughs> oh, <laughs> two Vix. <laughs> uh, uh, well, sir, I don't think that I'm exactly the right person to do that. Um, so technically the, the ship could do that, but I can't. Zeke's like, am I nothing to you? <laughs> He's oh, he's down. out. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he's Excuse out. Me. While I bleed out onto the ground. <laughs> I want to save you. It's not my turn. I can't yet. Ben. Ruining this beautiful <laughs> uniform I just replicated. <laughs> All right. Cartwright, get out here and give us some cover. Uh, very good, sir. And uh, Cartwright will scuttle over the door. It opens up. He is carrying his Type 2 phaser, but he is going to just charge directly towards the Savonian and try to engage him in melee combat so that he can no longer fire at Williams or the other members of the crew. Okay, I think a crucial Aww. detail, I mean, it's a good idea, but crucial detail, these two are up on a building about two stories up. Ah, okay, then uh, he will kind of take a position here behind the, uh, the warp nacelle. cell. Okay. And he will fire off a shot at the, uh, the individual up there. Okay, so the rightmost one. Again, that's uh, control security, difficulty of two. Just get like a bunch of complications, and you accidentally hit the Bassard collector, and we're done like dinner. That's all right. And I though. do not have a applicable focus. So yeah, unfortunately, Cartwright, unless you have a value to tap here, uh, you fire and miss completely. All right, so uh, it is now the enemy's turn, but there's no more enemies to go. So I guess it literally is just Williams and Alal act. And then the uh, thugs will go. LL. Um, she's going to try and uninjure Zeke. All right. So that is a daring medicine difficulty of one. Wait, can she do that being injured herself? Oh, no. You're not injured injured. You have just taken stress damage. Oh, okay. Gotcha. What was that? Reason? Uh, daring medicine. Oh, daring. Emergency medicine. Can I use momentum? If you had any. Do we don't. Okay, never mind. You could give I don't me threat. All these things. Threat is an option. Okay, sorry, Zeke. <laughs> I like to imagine Alel moves from Thorson over to Zeke and tries percussive maintenance and it's not doing anything. In fact, Zeke, maybe you're just spurting out a little bit extra blood at this point. <laughs> She's Frozen injured herself, blood. so it's like Difficult. Oh cold. Lord! Yikes. I'm so cold, Alel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't carry you oh. to the runabout. Oh. <laughs> That's a dagger to the heart, Dag. Oh, all right. Well, all right, Williams. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna shoot at one of the remaining thugs. Okay. <laughs> I would say that you could charge for the area effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us, you know, I keep forgetting about the uh, the versatile quality on the phasers. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and, and uh, charge the uh, charge the phaser and try to hit them both in a wide beam dispersal. All righty. Standard control security, difficulty of two. All right. So I'm going to use my augmented control. Um, and... That's fine. All right, that is three successes, and that means you get a point of momentum. Yeah, go ahead and roll me your damage. Yeah. That is 
eight challenge dice. That is quite a lot. So Williams, Woo! you set it to the wide beam, aim with your phaser and fire up at the thugs, and they all collapse down and effectively end combat. However, yeah. there is still the matter of Tavi's overloading phaser. So Tavi, what are you going to do about that? Um, he's going to try to, like, fix it. <laughs> okay. That's going to be a daring engineering difficulty of three. Yes, power systems would apply. And I'm going to use that momentum. Maybe give him some threat, too. And I'm going to give you some threat. <laughs> okay. God. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. Um, and if you, I mean, if you're gonna give him a value, and you could potentially tap that value to get a couple of, I I do have a value, but I'm gonna save it for rerolling. Or do you want me to use it ahead? Hmm. I'll use it ahead of time. Okay. I don't know. I think you're rolling four dice. You might want to save that to reroll all the complications you're gonna get. Yeah, <laughs> probably good. <laughs> All right, I'll save it. Uh, so daring engineering, uh, four dice. Any positive vibes? And then uh, applicable focus. Mm -hmm. Oh, three successes. So Tavi, you just frantically type on the uh, plasma pack, and you maybe even pull out the power source and just sort of hold it as it hums, and then it just sort of goes back to an inert state. And what I would say is I think it is reasonable for me to say that Alel can get Zeke stabilized, but now you're in the position where both Zeke and Thorson are in need of further medical treatment. I would like to provide this medical treatment. Well, you're going to need to go back to the clinic for that one or go to the runabout. I think the runabout's closer. Can either of them get up and move, or am I going to have to drag them? You're going to have to drag them. I'm oh, dragging we'll, a Gorn. We'll, we'll help. Yes. Please. We've got, got Cartwright, too. It's fine. Okay. We'll, we'll get him there. Okay. I'd like right. to treat them where as soon as possible. So. All right. So our uh, way we wrap up today's scene is we see Zeke uh, and Thorson and everybody basically getting into the runabout. Uh, but I have a very important question for you. Do you take any of the thugs hostage or for interrogation? Uh, oh, yeah. All of them. Okay. Then I will say that you are able to get at least one thug, and I'll roll off screen to see if you get the other three. But that is where we're going to end tonight's session. So what did you guys think? Uh, is this the murder mystery you were hoping for? I think. I think that now when we come back for part two, we're going to hit them fast and hit them hard. And we're going to be, everybody's going to be great. Cause we, it was all, it was great. It was great. You guys, I think, we're, we're all, I think the good. commander is like the best commanding officer for don't, an away don't, mission don't, don't do ever. That. Don't. <laughs> I, I think that the Fenrir is going to come in and clean our mess. Uh, the main command crew will just, I'm going to, we're going to, that building was smashed when we got here. <laughs> I love going. I loved that we get always do like two, two vert two two sessions for stuff because mm -hmm. I love mysteries, so it's really fun. Cool, cool. All right, this is where I'm going to kill the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. You will see these lovely individuals next Tuesday. See you, stream.